You gotta start a podcast off with swearing. Shit. <laughs> and on that note, welcome back to Snatch and Scotch. We're here at the Cross Fuel Sweat RX and Rush Club showcase, and it's an amazing event. People are coming in, watching the head-to-head starting, and we're here with Ryan Atkins, right? Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Awesome. And then I watched this guy do the obstacle course, and he was like a little monkey and just got through all these impossible things. Uh, I'm 200 pounds and I have no hope in that course. I shook his hand and broke it. <laughs> but that man strength. <laughs> yeah, it's that ball crushing strength. That ball crushing strength. <laughs> how, how does one develop such ball crushing strength? Is this like a job that you've been recruited for? Um, the, like a official ball crusher? Yeah, the official ball crusher. No, uh, <laughs> <laughs> official nut wrangler. I'd say a lot of my grip strength comes from uh, rock climbing background. I used to do a lot of oh, rock wow. climbing and bouldering and that kind of stuff and that transfers over really well but then it's also something i work on Absolutely. with like dead hangs and um i've got a bouldering uh wall in my house so wow. <laughs> it's kind of random but it's fun to play on. yeah so what do you do um technically i'm an athlete right now yeah technically <laughs> <laughs> yeah I get, I get paid to race obstacle course races which is pretty fun you're an obstacle course racer and you have paid yeah. that's awesome yeah it's wicked so what do you uh what kind of races are you have you been doing um so I mostly do battle frog and Spartan races, but I also do the world like the Tough Mudder championship yeah. every year, which is called the World's Toughest Mudder and um, just other which you've won, correct? Yeah, I won really? it the last 2 years. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So what else have you won? Uh, I've won a lot of a lot of different events, but the two the two big ones, I was second at uh, obstacle course racing world champs and at Spartan racing world champs both last year. Wow, that's Which, pretty cool, holy man. Moly. Yeah, it's what, pretty what, good. Uh, what, what does that look like? What's the hardest part about the world championships compared to like a real, like a regular, for example, you know, Spartan race? Yeah, so or just a tough mutter, which like. 80% <laughs> of, or sorry, 80%, 99% of the population would go out and do and think it's a horrible day to do yeah. 17k, whereas for you that's <laughs> like a day's training? Yeah, or so half a day's training? The Tough Mudder Championship is pretty cool. It's a, it's a 24 hour event and you basically do as many laps as you can in 24 hours. So the biggest challenge with that is just kind of durability and not stopping and um, yeah, so the first year I did that, I ran 100 miles, and last year I did 95 miles. Oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we've got a serious endurance <laughs> athlete here. What type of training do you do? Like, so, I mean, we're at a CrossFit competition right now. We do, we talk about functional fitness with a lot of people. How does that, or is there any carryover to what you do? I mean, I've heard you love Cindy. <laughs> for those of you, so, so for the CrossFitters out there, they all know what Cindy is. Cindy is 20-minute AMRAP of 5 pull-ups, 10 push-ups, 15 air squats. I've heard that's like your go-to as far as workouts. Yeah, as, for as far as CrossFit style workouts, that's probably one of the only ones I kind of touch on. Um, I think I would probably make a pretty good CrossFit athlete because I, I just look at a weight and I like gain five pounds of muscle like right there, <laughs> which is which like it sounds great to probably most people listening. But for but you, that's not ideal. But for someone who wants to run for six, eight, 24 hours, it's yeah. not ideal because you just have to carry that weight up and down the mountain more and more times so I, I try to minimize the amount of like heavy lifting I do and um, yeah. most of my strength based workouts and like training is just body weight based or um, like carries, sand bike carries, jerry can carries, um, carrying like stones up hills that kind of stuff so that's that's kind of where most of my strength based uh, training comes in and then just running lots of like running all the time and just running lots of steep awesome. terrain. So you're yeah. still doing you're still doing plenty of weightlifting, uh, technically speaking. Yeah. It's just you know you work in a different system. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. Awesome. Different modalities. Do you have a coach that works with you on this, or do you just do whatever um, comes to mind, or how do you how do you train? Uh, most of my training, I just do most of the programming myself. I've got some people that I kind of get ideas from and bounce kind of concepts around and stuff. Sweet. But I came from a mountain biking background, so I'm like very familiar with um, periodization and endurance training and yeah. then all that and because it's such a n- new sport you look at like the top 10 guys in the sport and they're all 10 of them are training differently so it's kind of really cool um, time to be in the sport because everybody has their own opinions and you know yeah. this works for this and this course you need to do that so you can kind of take um, different ideas and kind of mash them all together and come up with something that's your own that's awesome man that sounds very interesting yeah Really, really cool. So, what's up? What's up? Uh, what's coming up in the future for you? Um, I'm going to Colorado next week for uh, one of the big Spartan races out in Breckenridge. 
So that should be interesting because it's uh, between nine and 13,000 feet. Um, Have you met Joe? Yeah. He's so born and raised guy? I won't be Joe able to. Joe Senna? Yeah, yeah, I know Joe. Yeah? He's a good guy. Yeah. <laughs> I heard he's crazy. Yeah, he's a little crazy, <laughs> but yeah, he's uh, he's a good figurehead for Spartan. And, um, nice. Yeah, I've, I've went down and spent some time down, and uh, he actually owns like a, a little town in Vermont, yeah. called Pittsfield. And I went down there and did some races down there and hung out down there. It's really cool. He he owns like his own mountain, and he owns like a general store and like basically this whole town. It's all just built around all this awesome Spartan type stuff. That lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, that's it's a awesome. cool place to hang out. But yeah, so I got that race coming up, then another Battle Frog in New Jersey, which should be cool, and then kind of everything. And then actually after that, I'm gonna stay out in Colorado and do a really cool mountain run, which is like, I'm pretty stoked about. It's like, basically you traverse 14 mountains, and it's uh, about 110 miles long, and you do it over 60 hours. So that's, that's like, and it's not a race or anything, it's just something I want to do. You'll never hear CrossFitters say, I'm really excited to run for, uh, <laughs> for, for 14 mountains. Yeah. Oh my goodness, that's crazy, man. Yeah, so that's pretty wild. That's, that's insane. It's kind of stuff that gets me excited. So, it, yeah. As far as a week's worth of training, like, I mean, not to go into periodization or anything like that, what does a typical day slash week of training look like for Ryan? Um, well, yeah. Like... like you're in Caledon, right? Which, I mean, yeah. Ferrari, I mean, it's, it's a perfect area for this type of training, but yeah. so what do you do? So, I'd say I train anywhere between 12 to, like, average 12 to 22 hours a week, and um, I'll run every day at least once, sometimes twice, and then do strength workouts about three times a week. And um, so mileage is around 80 to 120k of running a week and then probably like four or five hours of strength training on top of that wow you still ride your bike at all and i do yeah i ride my bike just kind of for recovery or i'll uh i'll take my dog out for a bike ride which is kind of fun so how do you how do you stay injury free with all that training that all that volume um, yeah because that's huge volume compared <laughs> to most crossfitters they look yeah. at that and be well, like you what do you mean you, you train more than four hours base, yeah right to do that like people yeah, don't, so don't go and train 22 hours a week yeah, so <laughs> that's a terrible idea. Yeah, it takes a, a lot of years to build up that kind of volume. Yeah. Um, but how do I stay injury free? Basically, I do a lot of like exercises to focus on like all round strength. So I'll do a lot of like side to side motion and a lot of kind of uh, dynamic loading and unloading and kind of. So I, I do a lot of work to focus on kind of having all round strength in my like mostly legs and hips and stuff because yeah. that's really important and that's what gets so banged up and loaded up so yeah lots of that lots of rolling and you know all the good stuff we've got those normatex space boots that i put have you on. got a set yeah i've got a set they're that's awesome, awesome. <laughs> so they're pretty cool it makes me feel like i'm like an astronaut oh when really I put those on but um nice. yeah it's so, like you know cold baths and all the training yeah. techniques but um yeah other than that just kind of focusing on yeah, that's awesome because I mean it blows things. my mind when people like you train the way you guys train. It's it's very difficult to stay injury free because when, when you're at, when you're at an elite level like you are, you take risks and it, it's tough, right? So yeah, that's really cool to see that you can you're smart enough to do that. You're probably very good at listening <laughs> to your body as well. Yeah, I think I think one of the other things is like so many of the races are on such like we basically run up and down ski hills or mountains for multiple hours. So like the footing is so terrible. You're just constantly running over little rocks or boulders or whatever so that's definitely a challenge it's not like rolling an ankle or blowing a knee in like racing and training but yeah that's awesome that's pretty cool well it was a pleasure having you i thought that that's that's an amazing information man <laughs> that's uh that's great to hear yeah, yeah and cool, it's inspirational guys. too because a lot of crossfitters like the obstacle course racing yeah and they're kind of dabbling in it a little bit um but i don't think they realize how crazy it can be i think i think the CrossFit and obstacle horse racing are very kind of like they're sort of cousins almost. Um, CrossFit's like a lot shorter and yes. like a lot more um, kind of dynamic and like intense. short, intense. In face, yeah. yeah, in your face kind of and kind of like a more um, clinical environment where all the weights are the same and everything like that. And OCR is a bit more kind of like you're out in the woods and you're picking up random stuff. But I think like a lot, there's tons of crossover and I think I think that like 
OCR athletes could learn a lot from CrossFit athletes, and likewise, I think. Yeah. Um, I think if CrossFitters focused on like more endurance, I some volume, some volume, I think it would like be massively beneficial because at the end of the day, um, whether you're doing like a six-minute workout or a five-hour workout, it's all about moving blood and like developing that takes years of endurance training. It's a, a very good point. I mean, yeah. I've always advocated for that from, from day one. And if you look at uh, Rich Froning and uh, Team Mayhem, they do a lot more high volume training. Like they, they run a couple of times or three times a week now, yeah. and they do long runs just to develop more of a basis as a weakness. And I think yeah. you have a really good point. For yeah, sure. there was a, I forget who it was that came out and said, I think it was Brian McKenzie recently came out and said, you know, we've been testing CrossFitters and we found out that they have no aerobic base. And I was, so 10 years ago when I was yeah. first exposed to CrossFit, I sort of said, you know, you guys need to do more low end. You do way too much high end stuff. If you did more low end, you'd actually do better. And it's taken 10 years and they've finally come to that conclusion that, hey, by the way, we need to do some volume and it'll actually make us better. And not volume, yeah. just do a shitload of, like, you don't do Fran 15 times a week, <laughs> but doing like hour long workouts where yeah. you actually put in that volume, you build that mitochondrial density, the ability to push blood around. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that actually makes you better at the high end stuff, right? Yeah, so exactly. it's it's coming and now that you have I mean I guess you could call Brian McKenzie a thought leader at least he's an influential figure yeah. saying these things you'll start to get that coming around I would bet within the next two years you'll see the majority of at least high level crossfitters or guys who are planning to go to the games doing actual low intensity work and they'll get benefit yeah, from it totally like putting on a 20 pound weight vest and going for a 4 hour hike like yeah. something like that I don't think Hardly any CrossFitters probably do that. No. <laughs> no. But like, I, I, I get that, groans at my gym vest, when it's over off. 30 minutes. I like, 30 minutes? Yeah. Are you nuts? <laughs> I put on a 20 pound weight vest and went for a 10K run. That was yeah. bad. That's because that's my mentality. That's a bad idea. But yeah. this is where we no, get no, to no, build yeah. up to it. <laughs> yeah. right? Oh, no, I didn't build any. I just put that on and ran. <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> it was bad. So I think that's a great point because that also would lower the amount of injuries in CrossFit. Having those longer workouts, totally. you're working on a very lower percentage of your of your max effort and you know building that base so i, I think it's a great idea yeah. i wouldn't do them every day but you know once yeah, or twice totally. a week once like it's not bad yeah exactly. absolutely yeah totally It'd be awesome. awesome well i love the conversation happy we met you cool and yeah thanks I, for having uh, me on guys i love it when we, when we meet like-minded people and hang out <laughs> i hang out one and last we all thing just agree on the same thing <laughs> yeah <laughs> awesome. you still riding the unicycle uh yeah sometimes <laughs> so hang on, were you world champion unicycle? Yeah, I was world champion. You guys have been world champion uh, in multiple sports. Trials and mountain unicycling um, a couple times. My awesome. life is uh, human uh, awesomeness champion. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan's the world champion of everything. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, man. Well, thanks so much for talking to us. Uh, enjoy the rest of the day. Hang Stop on. If we, where can we find you? Oh, like, yeah, 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 social media. Like, if you want to know more about you, like, where yeah. can we send them to? So, I've got an athlete page on Facebook, which is just Ryan Atkins. You can search that. Um, and then on Instagram and Twitter, my tag is Ryan Atkins Diet, which is just a kind of a, a bit of a joke, but <laughs> a pun or whatever. But yeah, you can find me on there, follow me. And, uh, and you have your own podcast. Questions. And I just started my own podcast called The All In Athlete. So that should, awesome. be, that should be going live pretty soon. So Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. That's, That's exciting. It. Fantastic, man. I'm excited for that. Thanks, Best of luck with uh, the races coming up this year. And uh, I'm sure we'll hear much more from you now that we've introduced you to the, the CrossFit realm. Yeah. Hopefully more of those guys are following you. Yeah, totally. For sure. Awesome. awesome. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Thanks. Nice, buddy. There you go. The ball pressure.